All right, good afternoon, everyone. Today is Wednesday, Wednesday, January 4th, 2012. Um, we'll start right out with the results from the live trading room, and then I'll go over the trade setups that actually set up, the ones we took, the ones we didn't take, and why. Um, all right, you can see I got uh, 56 ticks right here. It was my profit for the day. That's uh, two points. I was going for my two points, and I got that, my 56 ticks. All right. Um, now, in full disclosure, Dwayne had taken a trade this morning with, I think, one contract on, and he lost two points on it. So he lost eight ticks. So the net, I think, for the morning, for the people in the live trading room, what they saw done was um, 48 ticks, I believe. Would have been the net. But I got 56 here, is what I took in the live trading room this morning. Um, I was a little late getting in there this morning. I had some technical difficulties this morning, but hopefully they're... Uh, resolved for good. Um, just going to start right over here on the four tick range. You know, as the day started out here, it was um, inside the box. The BBC was inside the box, so we didn't have any trade setups. The box is this thing's, this area created by the elbow indicator. When the BBC is inside there and it's sideways like this, particularly right at the open, it just indicates that you're in a bunch of chop and you, you really want to be careful around those areas. Okay. Um, you can see right here, the BBC pulled outside the box right here and it started to set up a short trade but we couldn't take the short right here because of this area right in here. All right, I was just getting back online at the time that this had happened. Um, this spot right here disqualified the short trade. Right, otherwise we would have been short from right here at the BBC moving down here. Um, as it was, this is 10, 10, 17, 10, 18. We did actually take that trade over here. Um, I, I marked it up on the 2100 and on the 10k um, and I'll show you I took it from I had put my order on here based on the 10k BBC um, but I was taking it more from everything that was given over here from the 2100 everything was pretty much in sync the only thing that stopped us on the four tick range was the pullback to the BBC was not clean okay um, I do have the rules in here on the four tick range for that type of trade setup not the ones up on the top there, but these ones right down here on the bottom. Okay, get a higher or lower swing pivot, we got that. The BBC outside the box, we got that. Fresh bubble, we had that. The pullback to the BBC must be clean. Number four was not right on that one. Okay, now this number four that we have here on this one, we actually need to add it up here to this one as well. Um, so we didn't have a short there, but we did get the short over here, right? This is where we got our two points this morning. Um, now some of the guys in the room went for more, you know, some of the partners in the room went for more. I know some of them got more, some of them didn't. Some of them got, you know, a little bit less than me, a little bit less than two points. Some of them got, you know, more than three points. Um, either way, I got the two that I was looking for. All right, then price turned around and it started to move up. Now, as it was moving up over here, it was also moving up over here, but we never pulled back far enough over here and we were looking for an entry over here on the four tick range. Now this was just as the morning session was ending. We were looking for our entry. Um, the rules over here when the BBC was inside the box, it's called the George trade. The rule is uh, number one, price gets a minimum of three ticks outside the box. We did get that. Price pulls back to the BBC inside the box. It did that over here. Um, the entry is a limit order rounds away from the price and it uses a two-point bracket. The one thing that isn't on that rule set is that the pullback must be clean. Um, number four over here. The pullback was not clean. We ended up putting in a double top, so we didn't take that trade. All right. Obviously, it would have worked out had we taken it, but it was not a valid trade setup. We never got the pullback over here. Now, I want to point out something else over here. This trade right here on the YM, when the YM trade setup is like this. You get a you get a crossover of the BBC by the MA1, and the first pullback up to the BBC is usually going to be the area that you're going to look to short. In this case, um, you're going to look to short. You know, if it were going up, you would look to be going long, and we'll go over that in a second too. This here was happening at the same time as the short on the ES. I was already in the short on the ES, so I did not um, I did not take this one over here. Um, that one worked out fine, as you can see. The area, the window of opportunity is the area between the BBC and the MA1. You expect that to get filled when, it, when you get this type of setup. It did get filled. All right. 
over here, we had a bullish cross and a pullback down. This is what Dwayne was looking for. Um, he was trying to get in right here, but it didn't happen. It didn't pull back far enough for him to get in. And again, this was as the morning session was ending. It did move up to the uh, move up to the zone. Uh, 320, 325 is a weekly trading zone. It moved up to the zone. It pulled back to the BBC. This would be the first pullback to the BBC right here. Okay, we never got the actual pullback, so this would be the first pullback to the BBC where you would look for a long trade. I would not have taken it because of the zone right up above us, but had you taken that, obviously it would have worked out just fine. All right. Um, that is the ES and the YM. All right, those are the ES and YM trades from this morning. Now I am going to switch. I'm going to switch to another chart here. Okay, and I want to see what your view looks like. There it is. All right. Um, <clears throat> over here, now what we're looking at is the 6E. This is the 6E on the four tick range. All right. I just wanted to point out a couple things to the folks that were. Um, that were in the webinar last week when uh, Jeff, one of our partners, took the mic and he went over the trade setups that he likes to do on the 6E. I just wanted to point them out to you here on the 6E. Okay. Um, I'm not going to point out all of them. I'm just going to point out one main one that he went over. That happened quite a few times today. All right. Now what you're looking for is a break of the elbow to either the upside or the downside. Um, odds enhancer is having the uh, MA1B above the BBC. All right, you want to have divergence on the combo indicator, and the combo start to turn up. Now, when a combo starts to turn up, the close above the MA1 is where you look to go long. All right, you can see that one right there. That was you no, know, it was in the wee hours in the morning, but that one right there worked out, worked out perfectly. Now, on the flip side, um, you broke the elbow to the downside over here. You started to get your divergence um, right over here. This one didn't work out as well, but right here is where you would have been looking to go short. Um, there may be some disqualifying factor to this if uh, if I were to have a 500 contract up with a DMT on the bottom of it, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Yeah, we'll get into that a little later. I'll show you another example of it though. Um, right here, we broke the elbow to the downside, and we had the divergence. Now when the divergence starts to fold down and you get your close on the downside of the MA1, then the move down, all right? Um, this was divergent the wrong way. This was divergent the wrong way. And let's see, as we got into it this morning, here was another one right here where we were above the BBC, above the, above the elbow, and we had the proper type of divergence down here. We closed up above the MA1 right there. Now this doesn't look like much of a move, but it's 62 up to 69. That's seven ticks. That's the equivalent of one and three quarter points on ES. So you could have taken one and three quarter there or locked in some profit. Um, <clears throat> or you know, gotten out with a break even. On the flip side, we broke the elbow to the downside here. Um, we had the divergence and the close down below the MA1. It actually did it again here. We had more divergence with another close down below the MA1. Then it moved up, and this is pretty much where we are right now. Okay, so what we would be looking for over here right now is for these to roll up, and then a close up above the MA1. Looking for that to move up. Um, volume's really off right here in the uh, in the 6E right now. Now, similar to that, over here on this is the six tick range. Um, I mean, it's usually a 10-tick range on the Russell. But when everything's heading down on the combo and the red is on top, pull back up to the MA1. When everything is heading up on the combo and the red and the blue is on the bottom, the pull back to the MA1. Everything heading down with the uh, red on top, pull back to the MA1. Everything heading up with the red on top, pull back to the MA1. All right. Um, I'll just draw in a little arrows there for you all, so you can see the the spots where all that happened. Okay, and this is using a an eight by ten bracket. For those of you who are curious about it, an eight by ten bracket. Um, you could use a much larger target if you wanted to. 
Um, but that's that's pretty much it. Okay. Um, and that was that was the morning on the Russell. Okay, so we did the Russell, we did the 6E, we did the ES, and the YM. Um, if anybody has any questions about any of this, you know, you can email me directly at tech. That's t e c h at c f r n dot net. Or you, know, you can type them in here right now if you want, and I would be happy to answer them. Okay. All right, so that is where I'm going to wrap it up.